Hey, hello. I want to plead that you watch this video till the end. If you don't watch till the end, you will misunderstand what I am talking about in this video. Thank you and God bless you. All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the End Time Truth Television channel. We urge you to subscribe to the channel, activate the bell icon by selecting all so that the next time we upload a new video, you will be among the first persons to be notified by Google. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Till then, Shalom. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are watching me from. God bless you and God bless your day. Um, this is the concluding part of the video that I started yesterday of the crack on the walls of Skowan. If you had watched that video and uh, saw or heard what uh, one of the members of the BOT of the Skowan uh, said, how he cried out that his life was in danger and not just himself but the rest of other disciples and apostles and evangelists were of you. Uh, you remember that the re recently we also brought you information that about 17 foreign uh, disciples and evangelists you know, in synagogue we are deported as T.B. Joshua's family spoke to the Nigerian authority that the services of those guys you know in the church was no longer needed uh, were no longer needed and so they were uh, deported according to the information that we we you know we have or that we had and so in this uh, this is the concluding part of that uh, yesterday video um, I hear you will hear the second daughter of TB Joshua who also incidentally happens to be one of the the trustees of the synagogue now um here you will hear her you know make statements that actually guarantees everybody who is assuming before if there was a problem in school or not you are guaranteed now that there is certainly a problem and the crack is widening every day um in this place he she tried to uh explain the position of the family yeah the position of the family how that they don't need these workers any longer they don't need the disciples any longer and she hinted you know if you're intelligent enough you should be able to pick the point that there is a struggle over the life of the ministry who becomes what in the ministry and so in her own opinion these guys came for training and so and their mentor is dead so why are they still waiting they came from their countries to be trained and now that the trainer is, uh, you know, is gone, that they were not here to, to take over the church. So you now can understand that the main reason why there is not yet uh, a service in Skowan, my own opinion, is that it's not actually that we are waiting on God because God wouldn't be in all this kind of much slinging, you know. I think it is because there is still, there are many storms. There are, there are, there are many things that have not been settled. The storms as still raging very very high well anyway let me allow you to listen to her and i will come back in another video where i will extra uh, you know the thoughts of my heart over these things i've said it over and over again that synagogue church of nation of nations may not continue as a church if ever it continues that would be a huge miracle but it will never ever remain the same even with all these things that are happening around there so many would have been you know uh disenchanted from the the happenings well um let me let you hear her and put down your own opinion in the comment section and god bless you thank you to those of you who are biased and you will not stop you know saying things that are not right i appreciate you at least you are getting involved and getting engaged with the video so thank you so much to you lovely people who are open-minded I, you know to receive the truth i'll be seeing you in the next video shortly from me to you shalom endeavor to watch till the end bye for now tb joshua's daughter promise said the allegations against the family were unfounded adding that david and others were only trying to give the church a bad name because the atrocities were exposed the 24 year old explained that the family saw cctv footage of some persons moving money from the church 
claiming that some of the drivers involved in the act had made confessional statements indicting the disciples. Promise also denied that the family was chasing away those who worked with her father. She said they were only asked to leave pending when the church would resume. She said everything that happened here was recorded and at the right time, depending on how everything goes, it will be put out for the public to see. The constitution of the church was followed to the letter and that was how my mom became a trustee. The day it happened, concerned members of the church appealed to the Corporate Affairs Commission and everything was done legally. From the beginning of the ministry, there have always been three trustees. The second time my dad made a change, the board consisted of my dad, mom, and my dad's nephew, Hassan. Last year, my dad wanted to put me on the board. His nephew, who used to go to court for him over the church building collapse, left the church. That was how Joseph David was brought in. He did not even know he was a trustee until my dad passed on. The only reason my dad made him a trustee was for him to attend the court sessions. My dad would not want my mom to be going to court for him. Joseph was the one that was following her son who left last year on the case with the EFCC. Promise said after her father's death, a committee was created. She explained that during the period, the family got reports of heavy movements of cash. Even the drivers they were using to move the money were the ones reporting these things. There is also a video where they were caught moving the money. The church lawyers then advised that we should report to the authorities, and that was how they were invited. The foreigners who were called to carry the money without knowing what it was went to the EFCC and were released after they were cleared to go back to their countries with the intention of coming back in about a month. They were not deported. They are coming back. These people talking are those I believe are guilty. All the other ones went to the EFCC and returned after they were interviewed. All they had to do was to explain what happened because there is video evidence. Evidence. I don't know why they are running. If you are not guilty, go and explain yourself. Asked why the foreigners were reported to the authorities. Promise said since the funeral of the late prophet, there had not been any activity in the church. And we don't really feel we should have workers that we don't need. That was the idea behind that. It was not deportation. We were paying non-essential workers and the church was not operating. So we said, we don't need anyone here. You can go back to your country. The person you claim to train under is no more here. These disciples, what did they come to do here? They came to train under TB Joshua and TB Joshua is not here physically. You came to train under TB Joshua as a disciple. So the intention of coming to Nigeria was not to take over the church, but to train under him, she stated. Promise said the church workers confessed the alleged atrocities of the disciples, adding that the departure of the leaders was a relief to many who had suffered under their yoke. She slammed David for saying her mother was not trusted enough by the father to carry on with the ministry. My dad had always put his family as trustees of the church. I am not surprised. This is expected. The church will soon resume. These ones are the bad eggs, she added. A spokesperson for the EFCC, Wilson Wajerin, confirmed that the case was being handled by the Lagos office of the agency. Asked about the restraining order, he promised to find out and get back to our correspondent. He had yet to do so as of press time. Well, 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 this is a comprehensive report from both sides, you know, and um, it's le it looks like the mudslinging keeps going on. But if you're intelligent enough, I think you should be able to pick up some things here. If you are intelligent enough, if you're not biased, if you are, you know, on the path of the truth, you should be able to pick up something here. Now, when we talk about people who have stayed in a place for the least, was said to be 20 years, and their stay came to an end just like that, question needs to be asked, you know, and somebody needs to answer some questions. And as well, the disciple, you know, the trustee, you know, who is hiding now, um, I understand that EFCC, 
doesn't kill people. They don't kill people. Even though that's here, in this place, anybody can be compromised. You know, the um, um, security agencies here cannot be trusted. If you, are, if you are on the wrong side of the economy and you have an issue with people who have, you know, um, who are money bags, you can be guilty even of the offense that um, has not yet been, been committed in the land. You can be guilty of it. So I wouldn't know, um, but your opinion also would be needed. But I think that there is some form of desperation. Somebody actually is looking for, desperately looking for the control of the life of the church. And like I've always said, I don't know. But if you ask me, Skoan will never remain the same. After all this, if it, it ever continues as a church, if she ever remains as a church, she will never, ever remain the same. Let's read your opinion. Put down your comments in the comment section. Please do like the video if you truly do. Share the link, you know, if you, uh, the video blesses you. And I would like you to subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. And please activate the bell icon so that by selecting all, so that the next time we upload a new video, you will be among the first persons to receive notification from Google. Uh, till I come your way again, I remain your brother in the Lord. Um, from me to you, shalom. Remain blessed in the name of Jesus. And once again, shalom.